Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM and this is a video which hopefully will guide you through the process of getting one of these, an electric car charger, for one of these, an electric car. I did a video about this about two or three years ago, but things have changed a bit since then, so I thought I'd do an updated video, so if you are thinking about getting a car that needs one of them, and you charge at home of course, then uh, keep watching, because hopefully this, at worst, will waste 15 minutes of your time for things you already know, or at best, could save you a lot of hassle and potentially some money. Right, well let's start at the beginning. Why would you get one of these instead of using one of these, which every household already has a three pin plug socket? Essentially, it's for one of two reasons for me. One, safety. These are uh, designed but not designed to run at maximum capacity for many hours. If there's even slightly bad wiring in that or just cheap components, you may end up with uh, a problem, essentially. I've seen too many pictures of these being black and charred messes and it's not ideal. It should work and I do use mine occasionally when I've got a press car as well, so I've got two EVs to charge. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use one at all, just rely on one, on one solely, day in, day out, for many months, charging many hours at a time, they're not really designed for that, whereas these are designed for it. To use a terrible analogy, and I should point out I am not a qualified electrician on this one, but for me, using this is like having a car towing a caravan when it can only just pull it. The engine is running at its limits, but it can still tow the caravan, whereas this tows the caravan with not, no worries at all. They'll both do the same job, but this one will do it quicker and it won't be under any strain or pressure. It won't be running at capacity, whereas this will be. So although you can use one of these, and I do on a semi-regular basis, certainly when I'm visiting someone who doesn't have a charger, that's fine. Just make sure if you are using it, everything is above board. All the wiring's fine. There's no heat issues. It's all good how it should be. But to make it simple, I think just, just, just get one of these. But that's just one reason. A second reason is, of course, speed. This will charge at around seven kilowatts. This will be just over two kilowatts. So it's more than three times faster to use this than this. Now, you might think, well, I've got, what, 12 hours every night. Why do I really need that extra speed for the cost uh, of, of getting one installed? It depends on the tariff you're on. You see, I'm on a time of day tariff. It's cheaper at night than it is during the day. I don't see them going anytime soon. In fact, for many, many decades, I think we'll have a time of day tariff. Remember, they started in 1976. They're not going anywhere. But anyway, back to the point. I have a time of day tariff, and for four hours, that's when this car gets charged because it's considerably cheaper than using the other 20 hours of the day. So the quicker I can put it into my car, the better. Can you survive with that? Yes, but this makes things far, far easier and the chances of anything going wrong a lot less as well. Now, the one thing that has changed is the Ozev grant, as I said earlier, doesn't apply to people who own their own house. So that typically means that for a lot, it's gone up upwards of 350 pounds more than it was before the 1st of April, which is when the grant changed. Another kind of effect of that though, is that you don't have to, because there is no grant anymore really for a lot of people, you don't have to go with an OZEV approved installer. Now that might think, Ooh, it should be cheaper. I could use Fred, the electrician down the road. If you're an electrician yourself, you might be able to install it yourself because you don't have to worry about the grant. Therefore you don't have to go through the approved process. Now for me, this is a bit of a, a double-edged sword for one, you're not guaranteed to be cheaper by using a local electrician compared to a proper charge point installer. And two, I think experience is worth it. I'm sure any electrician watching this as an example would take somebody who's been an electrician for a few years over somebody who has basically just come straight out of college or university and has aced every exam. Experience means a lot and someone who installs these day in day out is going to know the little quirks of each make and model. They're going to foresee the issues which they've come across day in day out installing these things. Whereas someone who does have the skills to install one, an electrician for example, may not know that just because they've never done one before or they're unfamiliar with that particular make and model. 
I have talked to nearly 20 people who have got a local electrician to install their charge point. And although it's working fine, it's perfectly safe, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be, they haven't done one key thing, and that's notify their DNO, the distribution network operator. I live in Yorkshire, mine is the Northern Power Grid, as an example, and a quick Google will find out who yours is. But essentially, before you get a charge point installed, you're meant to notify your DNO to make sure it's okay that you get one. 99 times out of 100, it'll be fine, but you still have to tell them. And that's something that I think local uh, electricians or people that do it themselves are not doing. Now, on that subject, I would recommend the company that installed this for me long before any sponsorship on this channel started. That is, of course, if you're familiar with the channel, Smart Home Charge. They are nationwide installers. They are OZEV approved. Even if it's just a landlord, it's still around, but they are fully approved. They've done this year in, year out. They have a ton of chargers to choose from. In fact, if you go to smarthomecharge.co.uk, you can put in the car you have or the car you're getting, and then it will spew out a list of chargers that work brilliantly with that car. Although, to be fair, most are type two. In fact, all cars sold now are type two, so any charger should work with any car. But you will get a full list of that. If you don't want to get them to install it, that's fine. They can sell you just the unit itself if you want, or you can get them to do everything. A fire and forget solution, out of the box, click a button, and they will then ask you for all the information they need to make it just a simple turn up on the day, whack it in, everything's good, all the paperwork's done, the DNO side of it, everything is taken care of. Look on their Trustpilot reviews. If you don't believe just me, again, I used them before any sponsorship started, so I'm happy to recommend them to you. So now let's carry on with the process. Let me go back to the speed of these things, which some people, again, get tripped up on. I get a lot of questions, as do Smart Home Charge, who have obviously helped me out throughout this video, about, I want the 22 kilowatt version of this because you can get 22 kilowatt versions of, I'm not saying this particular charge point, I'm on about charge points in general, um, because my car on the AC side of things will charge at up to 22 kilowatts. So why not go for 22, which is surely better than seven? It does make sense. Well, it's not a case of you can't get the 22 version of whatever charger you're after. It's a case of your house will not support the 22 kilowatt version of that charger. In the UK, for those that don't know, single phase electricity is by far and away the most common um, type of connection that we have in residential properties. I don't know the percentage, but I imagine it's in the high 90s of the amount of people that have single phase as opposed to three phase electricity to their house. So there's no point in getting a 22 kilowatt charger when your house supply will only do seven. If you don't know if you have three phase electricity to your house, then I can pretty much almost guarantee you, you don't, because you would know if you did. On the continent, it's far more common. So it does confuse things a little bit, but ultimately in the UK, just stick with a seven kilowatt charge point, unless you absolutely know that you've got three phase electricity to your house and you do need 22. Now you might be saying which charger to go for. And yes, before anybody mentions it, the charger's in the car and that's not strictly a charger. I don't care, I'm calling it a charger, okay? Which one to go for? Well, as you can see, I've got an Omi. I'm not suggesting that you absolutely would go for this. This, for me, was chosen because it had the features I wanted and it was at the cheapest price. And that is essentially what I personally recommend anybody asking me to do. So I thought, all right, I want these options. I want these capabilities of my charger. And then I'll just go for the cheapest one, please. That's got a decent warranty, at least. There is one other thing which I would kind of add to that, I suppose. And it's getting less and less common but it is a thing. Some charge points will need an earth rod installing to them, which is basically a massive long rod which gets driven into the ground and there's a cable from that rod to the charge point. Again, that's less and less common. It will more than likely increase your installation costs. So for me personally, I would just stick with a charge point that does not need an earth rod, which again, it's very common. An earthing point is something which I think they're all kind of getting rid of. I don't know the percentage, I would say the majority now probably don't need that, but to make it simple and the installation probably cheaper, just go for one like this that doesn't need it. And then, well, again, job done. 
Next, we go to what is probably the most important thing that you need to think about when it comes to getting one installed before the installer turns up. And for this, I think I'm going to have to change cameras to something that's a bit, a bit more of a wider angle. Where you position the charger is key, especially if you change your car and suddenly find that the charge point that was at the back is now at the front. It can trip a lot of people up and does to the point where they have to move the charge point somewhere else at extra cost. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So have a good think about where it's going to go. So for example, ours went there. So do a dad run for you. <laughs> when I had our Nissan Leaf, which charged at the front, it easily reached. The car we have now charges here. Again, easily reached. If we don't reverse the car into this spot and we drove it in front ways, it would, again, <laughs> easily reach. So we've planned this with some thought. But what if we can't get the car in the garage at all and it needs to go in the driveway? Well, for that, I'm just going to have to open it up to what is a very cold outside. Even if the car is on the driveway, the cable will reach it because it's there or it's there. Or if I have a front facing charging car, we, again, it will reach whether the car is parked here or here. So maximum flexibility. Oh God, that's freezing. And before anybody asks, yes, we've got a rubber seal underneath the garage door, which means yes, the cable can go underneath it. We've, we've thought about all this, but we did get caught out ourselves because I said we had a Nissan Leaf and originally the charger was over there on that side outside the, the um, house because they can go outside where there is not a problem and it meant then when I got this the cable wouldn't reach to here so I had to pay for it to be moved from there to there because I didn't put any thought in it originally now there are a couple of different options if you want uh, what is typically a five meter cable that they come with brilliant if you need something longer than that then you can extend the cables that they come with by replacing a tethered charger, but it's probably gonna void the warranty on the charger itself. So in that case, if you say I want a seven meter or a 10 meter cable, then get a non-tethered charge point, and then you can put your own cable in at whatever length that you bought it at, because, well, everybody's different, aren't they? Right, on this enthralling video, there's only one more thing which you need to put some thought into, again, to make life a lot easier for you, and potentially the person who's going to install it, on the day because they will need to have a cable like this one here it's quite thick that goes from wherever you're putting that charger or whether you want that charger to go back to your consumer unit or fuse box as a lot of people call it so for example if your consumer unit is at the back of the house in your kitchen cupboard and the charger needs to go at the front of your house on your driveway a cable of this thickness will need to go from there to there. So you've got to have a bit of thought, where do you, you know, how's the best path? Some people don't want an ugly cable going across the front of the house, so they made other arrangements. It depends, because again, everybody is different, but you will need a cable to go from your consumer unit, your fuse box, to wherever that's going to go. So put some thought into that, because again, not everybody wants a cable coming out of their kitchen cupboard, throughout the back wall, around the side of the house, to the front. There might be a better path, there might be a more expensive but better path that you personally would choose. They will need to know that before they turn up because they might need a lot more cable. It might change the installation costs. Right, okay, I'm pretty much done. Thank you to Smart Home Charge. Please do visit their website, whichever path you're going down because there's a ton of information on there, not just for chargers, but also for uh, charge points for cars, for public charging costs and there is a referral thing now. So I will put this in the description below along with any other relevant information. But basically, if you decide to get one from Smart Home Charge, use my referral link of which I have foregone. I've, I'm, I'm being uh, charitable. I am getting nothing from this. You will get £20 on your Octopus Juice RFID card, which you can use on the charging network, many charging networks out there. It was going to be 10 each, but quite frankly, with a supercharger network, I wouldn't use it. If you don't have one, they're free. Just go and get one and then you will get it. So um, yeah, save yourself 20 quid on the public charging network if you're buying a charge point 
by going to Smart Home Charges website and putting in all the information that will be in the description below. I'll probably do it as a pinned link as well. So thanks to them for sponsoring and keeping the channel going. That's what sponsors are for. It's not just for money and greed of the YouTuber. It literally keeps us going. Uh, and thank you to you for watching. Uh, I know it's not the most interesting video, but we all have to start somewhere and these guides need to exist for, well, people who are new to EVs. So again, thanks for watching. See you soon.